Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at how the GTX 1060 and the FX 6300 get along together in certain games. For the card, I'm using the Zotac GeForce GTX 1060 3GB. And this card has a base clock of 1506 MHz and a boost clock of 1708. Zotac recommends a 400 watt PSU, but I feel like you could even get away with 350 watt, or maybe even less. I wouldn't recommend lower than that, though. The FX6300 is a 6 core, 6 thread CPU that came out around 2011 or so. It has a base clock of 3.9 GHz and a max boost of 4.2, even though that is only on a few cores. The CPU only supports DDR3 at the, a max of 1866 MHz. In my case, I'm using one stick of G, uh, 8 gigabytes uh, at 1600 MHz. I'm also including overclock results, as I was able to get an extra 200 MHz on the core clock and 700 on the memory. And for the CPU, I'm using a very moderate overclock of 3.8 GHz. Even though that is below the max boost, ma the boost clock only applies to like two cores, whereas this I'm pushing all cores to 3.8. And also, my CPU is one of the worst overclocking FX series I've ever seen. I couldn't, I can't get it past 4 GHz, and even then, it's a bit on the warm side for my liking. For the games, I'll be using max settings, excluding any MSAA, motion blur, or depth of field, as I never use them, and I feel like a lot of people don't, and they just hurt the maximum frames. I've also applied custom fan curves to both the graphics card and the CPU so they may boost farther than stock on the non overclocked parts as I do allow them to use that boosting technology. First let's get into Battlefield 1. For non overclocked it gave me an average of 69 frames per second. It was very playable and rarely went below 50 frames per second. I used the first mission in the game to get the results after the overclock, it achieved 74 and was a very noticeable improvement, although it was still playable, because I have a 75 hertz monitor, and so I could see every frame increase. In my case, I would recommend turning down some settings so I could get over 75 more often, although if you are only using a 60 hertz monitor, you can turn it up everything, and you might even be able to turn on MSAA as well, and maybe even turn up the resolution. I also want to mention that all games will be tested at 1080p. This is a very specific result as Battlefield 1 is very well optimized and will run on very little power components. Next let's get on to Black Ops 3. I got my results from a team deathmatch on Nuketown online, although you would be seeing gameplay of a local game on Nuketown using gun game. It averaged 85 frames per second, non overclocked, but there were stutters everywhere, making it virtually unplayable. And the overclock did nothing to the average as it stayed at 85, and the dips were still there, and it would cause non player fault deaths, and made it virtually unplayable. I wouldn't recommend playing this at Ultra, well, it was, isn't called Ultra, but the maximum settings. I do play this game on little lower settings. Uh, you put some on high, some on medium, and then some non-necessary ones on low. Turning down the settings would improve the S FPS a lot as well, and also get rid of those dips and make it playable all the way through. Minecraft next. It wasn't much better as there were a lot of chunk loading issues, even on overclocked. Non overclocked, I just I flew around to get these results on a world with the seed of bench. And the load distance was sixteen chunks uh, originally. For non overclock I averaged hundred and ninety FPS and the OC approved it to two hundred and twenty four, although the chunk problem still remained unsolved. If you were to turn down the low distance from 16 chunks, it might help this. I did not test. Although, just walking around a world playing survival, you would not even experience this on 32 frames. 32 chunks loaded. Next is probably the most demanding game in this list. It's Mass Effect Andromeda. This game relies heavily on both CPU and GPU. And improved greatly from the overclock. 
Now, the I got my results from running around the Nexus for about 20 minutes or so. But I am showing you guys what the performance would be if you were to be driving around EOS, which is a very sparsely populated planet at that. So if you were to be on Kadara or something where it's very dense, you would see even less frames per second. For the Nexus, though, I averaged 65, but there were still stutters on the Nexus, and outside it was basically unplayable. For the overclock, it improved it a bit to 74 frames per second, but the stutters were still there. For truly playable game settings, need to be lowered, specific to low and medium. That's where I played through the game, and it was very well balanced from a frame per second and look standpoint. Finally is GTA 5. Now this is a very CPU dependent game, seeing that the overclock on the CPU was very noticeable. I rode around Los Santos for about 30 minutes for my results and the non-overclocked gave me an average of 55 and the overclock went up to 67. Now even though that may only seem like a 12 frame increase, it also upped the minimum greatly over 30 frame uplift now this may just be an anomaly on the 55 frame per second one but i could feel a difference in stutters even though the 50 the non overclock didn't have many at all although i did do a little investigating and i did underclock my 1060 to see what would happen and there was no difference in performance just a pinpoint on how cpu dependent this game is now, if I were in a point where I had a 6300 and I needed a new graphics card, would I recommend buying a 1060? At the current market, absolutely not. Even if it was at MSRP or a little bit lower, still no. The 6300 holds back the 1060 too much to really recommend it. Now, in my case, I knew that within a year or so I would be upgrading to an 8400 or so so I felt that the 1060 was an okay buy at that point and I got it on sale right before the market really crashed now if you're a budget gamer out there and you have a 6300 what would I recommend buying 1050 Ti really very well priced card right now even in the bad market it's not super overpriced or if you want to go used the 680 has very similar performance to the 1050 Ti. And if you just need a computer in general, would I recommend buying the 6300? New? No. On Newegg, it's like an $80 part, and it is not worth $80. But if you can find it used for like 40 or a little bit more, a little less, it's an absolute great buy. It still puts up a lot of kick, even though it is over five years old now. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.